So that's what I call your static content. They're great things to have, which is why I batch record my YouTube content because then I know I can stay consistent with it. But you also want to have dynamic content. That means having a little bit of fun with your content strategy. So last week I showed you how to create six weeks of YouTube content in six hours. And I figured I'd keep that theme rolling and help you save even more time. So in this week's video, I'm going to show you how to create one week of social media content across platforms in 30 days minutes. Seriously. Give it a like if you're excited to dive in. The very first thing I do is check what's coming up. So I know what I'm going to be creating as far as my pillar content, which I'll talk about more in just a second, but what else do I have coming up in my week that I want to incorporate into my social strategy, into my social content for the business and the brand? Let's get into my computer so I can show you exactly how I do this. So we're going to go back to using our content calendar. And like I said in last week's video, I've been using this for 10 years and it is my tried and true best way of mapping out all of my social media content not just YouTube content. So this is how I plan my content in less than 30 minutes. So basically, um, I know what's coming up for the week as far as content goes, because if you watched last week's video, you know that I plan out my uh, YouTube content, especially for Tuesdays, well in advance. So I plug them all in to each Tuesday. And then every Friday, usually, either Thursday or Friday, Sometimes I'll, I'll do this on Sunday if I have to, um, but usually on Thursday or Friday, I'll sit down and I will not only look at the week ahead as far as content, what's planned, but I'll actually also look at my week in my calendar. So what do I have coming up for meetings and what do I have going on every day that I can use and integrate into my social media content? So let's just take this week, for example, this is July, the week of July 15th. Um, basically, I'm looking at how I want to integrate all the categories, which I'm going to show you in a second in the next step of content. So you have a couple of content categories and I organize them accordingly in my, in my calendar. The thing to keep in mind here when you're planning out a week's worth of content is that there's two types of content that you want to pay attention to. You have static and you have dynamic. If you only are posting things that are pre-scheduled, and pre-thought out and that you've plugged in the calendar for way too long at a time, which is a great way to be consistent, it kind of gets a little stale and boring. So that's what I call your static content. They're great things to have, which is why I batch record my YouTube content because then I know I can stay consistent with it but you also want to have dynamic content. That means having a little bit of fun with your content strategy. So big thing here is that there's really five themes that you want to pay attention to, to add in more dynamic content, more timely, more in the moment, uh, content that's going to get you more engagement. So things like key events and dates you have coming up. So is there some sort of celebration happening around the world that you can capitalize on or get in on? Uh, is there any sort of content uh, category that you want to specifically focus on, which I'm going to dive into all of those in just a second in the next step. Um, influencers that you can reach out to or send a message to during the week or post some of their content. So things like if there's a big publisher or magazine or blog in your space, add those things into your content calendar as well. Launches or campaigns, uh, as well as key brand messages. So what are things that you know you need to be saying over and over and over again on social media as part of your brand to really hit home with people what it is that you do and how you can serve and help them, whether with your products or with your services. Those are all five things that you want to try and include in your content throughout the week. So that's really your stat, your dynamic content versus your static content. And a really simple thing to do here, go on to Google. And if you're looking for dy dynamic content, especially from influencers or big uh, media outlets in your space, just Google search, let's say, YouTube marketing or travel vlogs or something like that. Google it and see what articles come up first. And you can see which ones were posted in the recent week um, or were posted in the last couple days. And those would be good topics. Other things to do would be check out sites like BuzzSumo and BuzzSumo will show you the top trending articles in your space that week. And that also can be used and plugged in to your content calendar. The five content categories to remember are BTS, behind the scenes, biz, bio, boost, and beehive. And I'm gonna explain what that means right now. Each of those is 
basically describing a different content category that you can use as a bucket to put in different key pieces that you wanna have in your content calendar throughout the week. So when I talk about biz, obviously it's related to your business. It's things that are going to be driving the business for you. So sharing a link to a webinar or sharing a link to um, a product or a service that you're selling or sharing a link to a new blog post that will drive traffic to your website. Whatever that may be, that's your biz content. You want to have that content throughout the week and that's really your pillar content, which again, I'll explain that next. So that's really important. Then your BTS is really showing the behind the scenes of your life. What makes you a real human? Because at the end of the day on social media, people want to know that they're interacting with humans. Even if you have a brand or a company, the more human you are, the more successful you'll be on social media. So all the different facets of your life, whether that's health or wellness or mindset, um, whatever that books you're reading, things like that. Those are all good things to include in that category. The next one is your bio, telling people more about who you are and what you do, because if new people are coming to follow you every single day, which is the goal here, then you need to be introducing yourself. So creating at least one piece of content every two weeks that tells people a little bit more about who you are and what you do. And you can see some good examples of what that looks like on my Instagram account. The next thing is the boost or the inspo content. The boost content is really to boost people up and elevate them, inspire them, allow them to give themselves a shout out, something like that. So inspirational content is what I like to call boost content. And then the final piece of the puzzle here is your beehive content. And beehive content is really for your community. So I mentioned earlier, allowing people to do like a promote yourself post. And this is something that I'll do on Instagram pretty often. I'll say this post is for you. Comment below with what you do and where you live. Give yourself a shout out. So that's your beehive content, which is really community focused. Other things you can do in this content category are asking for content ideas from your audience or doing a poll, something that's going to involve and engage them on a level where you're not just shouting or spouting content at them, but you're actually involving them in your social media for the week. And the next step is plugging that all into the content calendar. So you can actually see how I plugged this in when I was doing the screencast earlier. Um, you, you'll actually see on the content calendar what it looks like throughout the week. So where all of those content categories fit throughout the days of the week. And you'll see that Tuesdays and Thursdays we have pillar content. We have our YouTube video that goes out every single Tuesday without fail. And then we have a podcast that goes out on Thursday as well. So those are really our pillar pieces of content. And a lot of our content across platforms is built off of that. So if you want to take a look at that closer, we'll show you the screencast right now of how that week looks and where you can see our biz, our BTS, our bio, our boost, and our beehive content. So you'll notice things like it says bio or boost um, beside some of the posts, or it'll say like BTS right here. Um, or it'll say things like biz um, or it'll say things like beehive which you can see right here and those are going to be your content pillars um, and I'm going to talk about this in the next step but just to see the week in, it, in advance basically I always start with my pillar content. So my pillar content is my YouTube content. So I know that on the 16th, which is the Tuesday, I'm posting how much YouTube pays me every month. So the really cool thing about this and how we have it organized and how you can do it is everything in yellow is branching off of this one video. So it's taking this one piece of content and turning it into a whole bunch, which I also have another video on that topic, um, which we'll link below about the best content creation strategy that you can use. So this video gets broken into teasers that are gonna go on Instagram and Instagram stories. They're going to go on Twitter and on Facebook, on Pinterest, and they're going to be sent out via our newsletter. So that's really where this all stems from. So everything in yellow, I tease it on my Instagram stories. I tease this video the day before. So that gives me content on Instagram stories. I post it onto the community tab the day before that covers off YouTube. I put it on, well, I actually put the weeks before. So I put this video from the week before onto IGTV on the 17th. So it always goes up a week later on the Wednesday. Um, so this video will go up a week later on the Wednesday here. Um, and then we also do a native version of this video on the Wednesday on Facebook. So that covers off Facebook, covers off Instagram. And then on Thursdays, we do our podcast. So sometimes we'll do original podcast, podcast content, but a lot of the times it's repurposed content from my YouTube channel. So we had this interview with Julia Christina that we did on uh, YouTube on live. And then we took that content. I did an intro and outro and I put it onto the podcast. So that covers this off. And then I promote the podcast. So anything in green is 
stemmed off of the podcast. So it's teasers, it's mini clips, it's all those things. So I'm not creating brand new content for every platform. I'm taking this one piece of content, turning it into a whole bunch. Um, and then you'll see that the other thing that I do is I look at, okay, what does my week look like this week? So for example, I know that on Monday, I'm gonna be going for a workout, I have meetings in the morning, and then I'm gonna be working on um, content in the afternoon for our programs. So that means that in this time period, I don't really wanna be posting anything, I wanna just be focused. So I know that I wanna be active on Instagram stories and on social. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repurpose an Insta photo, uh, which I call bio piece of content, and that's gonna go on Facebook. On Twitter, we'll do an inspirational quote, which is boost content. And then on Instagram stories, I'm gonna do a BTS of planning the week. And then I'm gonna do a fitness post as well on my Instagram stories to show the behind the scenes of entrepreneurial lifestyle, etc. And then on the Tuesday, it's basically all YouTube focused. And then on the Tuesday as well, I knew that I was gonna be interviewing Marie Forleo, uh, which will be coming very soon to the channel. <laughs> um, and so for this interview, I definitely knew that I wanted to kind of tease the fact that I was doing this interview um, and that it would be coming out soon. So I put it on my Instagram stories and I made a note of that and it's BTS content so that I could put it in my content calendar and remember to do this. So that's super easy. So I do this day by day and I'm like, what am I working on every day? How can I make sure that I integrate my life in with my other pillar content so that I constantly am active without having to reinvent the wheel all the time? So really the key to this and to planning your content in a very short period of time is having pillar pieces of content, whether that's on Facebook, on YouTube, a podcast, and taking that, turning it into a bunch of micro content and then using your life to show you, okay, here's some opportunities of things that you can cover to put into the rest of your content calendar. And the next thing is actually putting this into your project management or in your calendar to make sure that you don't forget. <laughs> because honestly, I think it's so important to put this everywhere or else you just won't post and you won't be able to stay consistent on social media. So the moment that it goes into my Asana or it's in my calendar, I know that it's there for me to do and I'll actually block the time to make it happen so I can stay super consistent on social and re-engage my audience regularly. So how do I do that? Take a look. Now that I know what needs to be done based off of the content calendar, and one really important thing to also understand here is because I have um, these pillar pieces of content, which I mentioned earlier, I now know how it needs to be format formatted ahead of time for all of these different platforms. So making sure that you're formatting your content differently to cater to each platform is really important. So I know that just posting a YouTube link onto Facebook doesn't work very well. So what we like to do is we like to take the full length video and post it natively, meaning we upload it directly to Facebook. Uh, and that way we can share the whole video as added value content on my Facebook platform without creating an entirely new piece of content. And the reason that we do it a, a week later is because we want to make sure that all the traffic is going to YouTube in the first week, first 24 hours, really important. Um, but then we can take that piece of content, repurpose it a full week later onto Facebook and have it, like I said, as added value. So formatting things differently is really important, especially when you do things like repurposing an Instagram photo. You don't want to have tags and hashtags and all that kind of stuff on Facebook if they're not relevant because it's not formatted to fit Facebook. I also don't just post the link to an Instagram photo on Facebook. What I'll do is I'll actually um, take that unique photo or unique video and upload it directly to Facebook as well and just copy and paste the caption and reformat it to look appropriate for Facebook. So doing that's really important. So now that I know what needs to go in the calendar, what I do is I then go into Asana and you can see actually on today, it says promote YouTube video. And this is a weekly recurring task for me in Asana. So I remember to do this. Um, and so in my actual, uh, and then I'll do things like post to IG about fitness. Um, so I remember that I have to do them because basically how my life works is that if it's not in my calendar and if it's not in Asana, I'm not gonna do it. Um, so the other thing is I'll put these things into my actual calendar as little time blocks. So I know that at this time when I have a space in my calendar, so 10.30 to 11, I need to remember to do a story promoting the new YouTube video that just went live today. So that's how I keep it all organized. And this is how I plan out my content in less than 30 minutes. It's super easy to do. You can totally take advantage of this. And I promise you, it's gonna make you more consistent. It's gonna make you more effective and it's gonna make your content strategy be more dynamic and interesting. If you really wanna dial in your social media content and have that one pillar piece of content that creates like 
30 pieces of content off of it, you definitely want to check out our Boss YouTube Strategy Masterclass. You can find it at bossyoutubestrategy.com. It's a free masterclass where I'll teach you how to 100 extra subscribers and double your revenue in the next year using YouTube. Link is below to register and save a seat. Now, if you enjoyed this and you got a lot of value out of it, you know what to do. Take a screenshot share it out on Instagram or Instagram stories, tag me and let me know what your biggest takeaway was and how you're gonna use this to plan out your social media content as well. So this shouldn't take you more than 30 minutes. I usually do it on a Friday, Thursday, Friday, or, or a Sunday if I have to. And then I'm set for the week and I don't even have to think about it again. So I can't wait to see what you come up with in following this. If you liked this video, hit the like button below, share it with your friends and be sure to subscribe. And thank you so much to our comment of the week. I appreciate you so, 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 so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.